spacecraft tens of billions of miles away rely on this network of satellite dishes to communicate with Earth. But this system is in trouble. The Deep Space Network is operating at capacity and can't keep up with increasing demand, which experts say could lead to loss of important scientific data, like information about the sun's magnetic field, if nothing is done. The thought of not having that constant connection to our astronauts, to these key science missions, is a challenging and a concerning uh, topic. Here's how NASA's infrastructure got to this critical stage and what it'll take to fix it. The Deep Space Network, or DSN, uses radio frequencies to send and receive data, like this image of the Southern Ring Nebula from the James Webb Telescope, or the sounds of dense plasma, captured by the Voyager spacecraft as it studies interstellar space. The DSN also commands, tracks, and monitors the health and safety of spacecraft like Juno, which is studying Jupiter. What we do in space transfers directly to the Earth. Think about the impact that Apollo had on what we do today. Camera systems, the technology transfer into the industry. There were certain fields that didn't even exist before Apollo, like software engineering. Because a spacecraft's radio signals are being transmitted from billions of miles away, they're incredibly faint by the time they reach Earth. That's why the DSN uses these giant parabolic dish antennas and ultra-sensitive receivers. There's a total of 14 antennas at three complexes around the world, so spacecraft can reach the network no matter where they are. Each complex has 170 meter, which is really, really large. It's like most of a football field, and then a series of 34 meter antennas. When data leaves a spacecraft, it travels back to an antenna where it's decoded by the local facility, then sent here to the Space Flight Operations Facility in Pasadena, California, hey, where it's routed to the appropriate mission control center. But strain on the DSN has been growing for years. According to a July Inspector General report, demand is exceeding supply by as much as 40% at times. And studies show that number will reach about 50% by the 2030s. Because of this, the DSN has been forced to prioritize some missions over others, which has led to delays in data for some lower priority missions. This happened during Artemis 1 in 2022. Liftoff of Artemis 1. Though it was an uncrewed mission, NASA prioritized its access to the network because it's preparing the agency to send humans to the moon for the first time in over 50 years. We tracked Artemis 1 like we will track it when it has humans on board. We definitely do not want to lose communication with astronauts, right? As a result, all other missions that use the network lost over 1,500 hours of data collection time during that period. For example, the James Webb Telescope lost about 185 hours of data transmission time when it normally would have been able to immediately send images back to Earth. Even though James Webb and the other missions were able to eventually make up for that lost time, Smith says these delays could turn into losses in important data if nothing is done to increase capacity on the network. Baldwin says he's especially concerned given the ambitious goals the agency has for Artemis. The human landing the gateway system, the commercial landers. It's going to be challenging to meet all the objectives of all the things we want to do, include science and the human exploration portion of it. The DSN will face an even greater strain when the network's largest capacity users will be in the same part of the sky vying for the same antennas. It's very possible James Webb will take a hit on their science data collection. The Europa Clipper, as we build up the Artemis 3 and beyond, the Psyche mission that just launched. Really, it's users that require a lot of DSN time that takes the most amount of impacts. So why is the DSN in this dire state? One reason is that a lot of missions are lasting much longer than originally anticipated. Voyager, which launched in 1977, is still transmitting data from beyond the solar system. It is still going strong 46 years later. Our mission load just keeps growing because we've got all the new missions and then we also have older missions that continue to operate. But the big reason is that the DSN's infrastructure, some of which was built in the 60s, has become increasingly difficult and costly to maintain. And that cost does increase. We have inflation, supply chain issues that impact us. And so there's a list of things that will impact our ability to move out on these antenna builds and also to maintain our operational and uh, readiness to support these missions. Some major upgrades also take antennas offline for months at a time, which can increase pressure on the already overburdened network. We've had issues of complexes going down that happened on Artemis. We had a complex go down that we had to bring back up. We've had uh, axles break in our antennas. The agency has also had difficulty building new infrastructure. Its 2010 initiative to build six new antennas is nearly five years behind schedule. When we talk about long term, it's challenging. There will need to be investments to ensure that we can support the long term plans of NASA. 
One potential fix, a network of smaller antennas to specifically serve lunar missions so it can offload those missions from the DSN. The first of these antennas is set to be built by 2026. NASA is also testing the use of optical communication, or lasers, on the spacecraft studying the Psyche asteroid. Psyche has a tech demo on it right now. So instead of sending radio frequency signals through an antenna, it will use a laser to encode data. Baldwin says the DSN is also leaning on other space agencies around the world, borrowing their antenna networks when needed. They did help us with Artemis 1 when we had to shift some of the missions over to uh, other uh, international agencies. We did that. We are going to explore that for uh, Artemis 2 and beyond as well. Despite these efforts, Baldwin says the DSN isn't out of the woods yet. We're concerned, right? It's uh, maintaining schedule is key and difficult with some uncertainty in budget. So I'd be remiss to say that there's no worry that we're all good. For the first time in 50 years, the DSN is going to be supporting human spaceflight, but we're also supporting all of these other missions. So it's a different load on the DSN than what we've had recently. For the public to know that we are being good uh, stewards of our taxpayer dollars and ensuring that we can bring down that investment that they made into the science exploration, I think is key.